confused, you soon will be. Right, in just about an hour's time, I'll be telling you how you can go to the UFO convention, which is taking place in June. First, though, skydivers on patrol. That's one episode I certainly remember seeing first time round. And next week's is at the same time, and it's ESP. Now, before the programme, I said I'd give you details about the Euphoria Convention, as it's called, which is taking place on the 18th of June, and it's for all UFO aficionados. Now, basically, there are going to be quite a few characters from the UFO series in attendance. Jerry Anderson, who obviously is the creator of the series, he's going to be there with family, so, um, so I've been told. Ed Bishop will also be there, Dolores Mantez, Derek Meddings, who's the special effects guy who went on to work on uh, the Bond movies, uh, George Sewell, Vladek Shale, who plays Jackson, and uh, Wanda Ventum. They're all going to be attendants. It's the 18th of June at Conway Hall, which is in Red Lion Square, London WC1. Now, the cost for that is £9, but 60% of the proceeds will be going to the Great Ormond Street Hospital. Um, it's an event that looks as if it's going to be a great deal of fun. They're going to be re-showing some of the old episodes. There are going to be question and answer sessions, raffles, debates, and, of course, you'll be able to meet all the stars. Um, now, I haven't got any tickets here, but if you are interested in going along, then the best thing is for you to write to me, and uh, then I'll pass on all the details to the organisers. So if you're not a member of the Jerry Anderson fan club, I think it's called SIG or something, I'm probably totally wrong there, um, but if you want to go, then make sure you send a letter to me. I'll give you the address in uh, just a few minutes' time. Uh, also, off the break, we'll be counting down America's top ten with Casey Kasem. That's next. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good morning, welcome to Late Night Late, Thursday night, Friday morning, with myself, David Vickery, and a very special guest this morning, Dolores Mantez, one of the original stars of UFO. Now tell me, were you watching UFO last week? No, I wasn't. You weren't watching it. Well, the reason you probably didn't see it last week... It was week, all your fault. It was not my fault! I said, was. I said to say that it was not my fault. Basically, we showed a very British coup uh, in place of UFO, and then UFO was shunted a bit further along the line. And the phone calls we've had through, just so many, but you'll be happy to hear that the episode of UFO last week called Close Up will be shown at the end of this particular series. In the, well, the end of this particular series, there was only one series, wasn't there? That's right. So it'll be shown at the end of the series. How does it feel, after all this time, seeing it go out again? Well, I feel kind of weird. It's, um, you know, 18, 19 years since, but it's great. Well, I have to say, this is a little secret you let me into earlier on, which I'm probably not supposed to be saying. But you don't like watching it again, do you? It's your, your son well, who's the I big fan. I love watching it, so I just don't quite... I don't like watching you. You don't like watching yourself? No. What was it like making it first time round? Great. Good hard, fun. hard work, but great fun. Well, we had Kenneth Cope here about uh, two weeks ago, and he made something like 26 episodes of Randall Hopkirk, was it, in something like 14 months. Was, right. was the actual work period, this, I mean, was that the same sort of work effort th uh, from your, your side of things? Well, I think that was, it was a little faster than uh, uh, you felt. Um, I only did one episode in uh, Van and Hopkirk, and that just sort of went sort of so fast. One take, and if you didn't get it right that then... That was it. That was it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, if, if they were making UFO again, would you actually like to do it? I'd love to. I think I'd have to go for a more, more mature. The Mormons. Okay. Actually, it, it must have been very strange, though, with all the models. I mean, do you ever come into contact with all the models, or was that entirely separate? That was uh, separate. They, uh, the actual models were, um, uh, the special effects were at the Slough Trading Estate, and so we didn't sort of see them. Uh, just the actors in the studio work. Did you, did you ever that? know where you were? You, you must have actually got quite lost some of the time in which episode. Occasionally, occasionally, but they, there was always someone there to put you on the right track. Did you find that Jerry Anderson um, treated his actors perhaps as if they were models? I mean, having come from making things like Thunderbirds, where, where the um, models don't answer back, it must have been very strange for him to have actors around. I don't know. He, he, he was great. 
didn't see him very often, but when we did, he was great. He was on the ball to sort something out. And it wasn't going too well. Now, when UFO was made, of course, it was looking ahead to the future, to 1980. Yeah. When 1980 arrived, and you saw it was very different to uh, how UFO <laughs> made it appear, did you sort of think, um, well, perhaps we got a few things wrong? or? No, I think a, a lot of things have, have um, happened and come to fru uh, fruition. Um, I, I was looking at a photograph the other day and I thought perhaps um, my console was obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also analogue, isn't it? Now, we have here, we have here, I'm very proud to be able to show this, this is one of the original wigs. In fact, this is your wig, isn't it? Yes, but she's got a lovely small face and I have a, a great head. <laughs> great big head. So, so does this <laughs> so mean... to go all over this. Does this mean you're not going to put it on now for me? Uh, that, that's exactly it. <laughs> oh, well, fair enough. I know a snub when I'm here. <laughs> back out. Some other time, maybe. And I have to say, I, I, if you are one of these um, UFO fans out there, I have to say that I am very privileged. I have here one of the <laughs> original contact... You can't see it. It's so small, but I have got it. Heavy from me. <laughs> you, well, you, you haven't got any string... Basically, you haven't got the string vest to bring in but you have a picture of yourself with a string, a string vest, vest on and I have it for keep so if you want one I am sorry it's tough like it's Murray and I'm going to keep it in Murray plop plop it oh no Murray now <laughs> do you like a lot of the UFO convention of sorts we won't talk about that now we're waiting to know what we're doing tonight so for sure that you have a good time so if you were at that convention we could probably be talking about like you but one of the things that I particularly enjoy about UFO is the title sequence I think that's great fun when you have shadow, everyone's getting ready to get into the programme. Absolutely fun moment, and uh, here it is. Was it method acting for that one? <laughs> <laughs> there was yes. a big moment. You blinked twice, you missed me. <laughs> well, Dolores actually hogs some of the uh, UFO episodes, and that one, I think this was the line... Oh, I wanted you to say that. Prepare for exit procedure. Uh-huh. Prepare for exit procedure. Oh, wonderful! Absolutely brilliant. That's about all I said, I think. <laughs> yes. Do you see, I never made it an actor because I could never remember lines. Never mind. Now, the car. A lot of people have written in asking about the car. Where is the car nowadays? Well, my son reckons some... Uh, a school friend of his, uh, his family ha has it. Oh. I, I really don't know for sure. And it used to be a Ford Granada, so if you wonder if you wonder what, what the chassis was, it's a Ford Granada. Now, this very precious photograph has been blown up just so you can see it. There you are in all your glory. There's the string vest that you know, for two or three weeks that string vest caused so many letters to come into the office. Now, what was it like wearing it? Cool. <laughs> Uh, and we had um, body uh, stockings underneath. Um, very necessary, I thought. <laughs> and did you did you go through them fairly quickly? Did you have quite a few of those, or did you, you have know, one that lasted the whole? I just had the one. The... I wasn't on Earth very often. I was up on the moon there uh, yeah. most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uh, it certainly looks very cool. In mm. fact, the, the wigs. I noticed that you're not you're not wearing the long pink. Not pink. It's purple, purple. wig, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, they were for the moon. When you were sent down to Earth, you, you had uh, a plain wig on. But everyone your own hair. Right, Peter, that, that's enough of the picture up, though. He, 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 li he likes leaving things up so long, it's unreal. Uh, yeah, so, but the men wore wigs as well. George Cole in there it looked extraordinary, didn't he? Yes, the men all wore wigs of some uh, colour, shape or size. They all did. Yeah. Did you, did, were there many taken onto the Fanderson euphoria a couple of weeks ago? Were there, Many of the wigs, were they taken along to the fans and you for everyone trying Well, a lot of the fans had green, purple, and all sorts of wigs on, you know, and costumes, and they looked great. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, apparently a good time was had by all that. A very good time. But th there's actually going to be another euphoria sort of weekend at some point, isn't there? Um, yes, I think next year in um, Birmingham mm. there's going to be a UFO weekend. Date. Euphoria. Euphoria. Date yet to be set. Now, I have to ask you this. I also have another picture here, if you can see that without it reflecting too much that is you with ed bishop and you're going to sign this for me i think there are going to be so many people out there who are really jealous and uh yes <laughs> I, 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 that, I didn't do that birthmark ah the birthmark yes about four people rang in just before ufo saying 
it's a love bite. <laughs> Saying, why is David Vickery showing off his love bite? It is not a love bite. It is indeed a birthmark. Right? Just thought we'd clear that up. Yes, that um, puts me in the clear. That does indeed. And everyone else. Right. Okay. That's lovely. With love. Oh, that's really nice. Just for me. Well, thanks very much for coming in. Pleasure. It's been absolutely great having you here. Are you um, going to go home now and sort of wind back the video? Yes, do you mean to say that uh, there's nothing else? No, I'm afraid that's it. Basically, after the break, we have Transworld Sports, so hang in there. Well, 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 how does it feel seeing it after all this time? Well, you know, Dave, I haven't seen a complete episode of UFO, and I, 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 I can't remember how many years. But uh, looking at that now, that is not bad. That really wasn't bad. I mean, there were some really very good actors involved there. I mean, Darren Nesbitt was wonderful, and the, the lovely Wanda Ventum, and uh, I mean, Vladik Scheibel. I mean, it was absolutely terrific. And I think the story held together, and I, I, I think that was made over, over 20 years ago. And yes. that, to me, seems as slick and, and as tight. And I'm, I'm very impressed, I must say. Is that one of the uh, episodes that was made at Pinewood? Or? No, no, no. That was the, the last episode, I think, that we shot at the MGM studios in Boreham And we had a kind of a funny thing. Followers of the series will know that George Sewell was my uh, second in command. But George only did it, assigned his contract to do the first, I think it was 17 episodes, which we did at MGM. And uh, so they had to replace George because we were going to make uh, nine more, seven or seven more episodes. We were going to make it Pinewood. So they were looking around for who could be this number two. And uh, Gary Raymond, uh, the dark-haired fellow, uh, he, they were thinking about having him come in. And I kind of opted, although uh, Gary's a wonderful actor, uh, I felt that we were uh, so similar, you know, uh, both being men, severe and uh, stern, you know, that sort of thing that I, I went for, I suggested that they, they get Juan de Ventum to come in as, as the number two uh, second in command, which in, uh, I mean, woman's lib hadn't taken place in those days. I just thought mm. it would have made a nice contrast. She's a beautiful girl, a wonderful actress, and they did do that. And for the seven or eight that we made at Pinewood, those who follow the series will see Wanda in that number two slot. Would you uh, say that the, the, the ones that were made at Pinewood were very different to the others. Oh yeah, uh, infinitely better, infinitely better. I mean, the ones we made it uh, at uh, uh, at MGM, I found were, were slower. We were finding our way, you know, because the series had just uh, started. Uh, we were new uh, actors to it, new directors to it, and, and the, the, the writers and all that. But uh, we gradually found our way, and then we had a break uh, of two or three months. And during that time, they they hired. Uh, a lot of uh, directors who were used to working in this in this medium, and we got some uh, writers in, and, and uh, some of the episodes, Sub Smash, Time Lash, I think Psycho Bombs, all those they moved a lot faster. They were tighter, and they moved a lot faster. I think they were uh, the seven that we shot there were uh, were for my uh, way of thinking much better. Although this was a very good episode, this mm -hmm. was not bad at all, not bad at all. One of the things uh, people say to us is that we are showing the series out of order. Was there any set order in the first? Well, there was a kind of loose order, but uh, you see, so much happened, like George left and uh, we had to bring in new people, uh, that, that a, a sort of continuity was, was virtually impossible. So you may see a character in one episode who was killed in a previous one or something like that. There wasn't all that much attention to detail as far as the continuity of, of the of the storyline went mm -hmm. and i think that that was a uh, i think that was a shame that that had to do uh, that it had to happen but uh, it just was one of the the, the flaws in in the series mm -hmm. you know, and it's not absolutely continuity 100 percent was that was there ever talk of the second series oh yeah as a matter of fact we got within i would say half an inch of cbs picking up their option uh, I was in America at the time, and I had some phone calls and letters from Jerry and Sylvia, and they kept on saying, hey, we're getting into advanced uh, preparation here. When are you coming back to uh, England? And uh, uh, ITC, uh, and just, it's a very long, involved, complicated story having to do with the FCC in America, Federal Communications Commission, sort of like the IBA is here. 
CBS wanted to pick up the option. They got within a half an inch. And I think that if they had picked up that option in 1970, whatever it was, uh, we would still be making them. I think it would have been... What, today? Uh, well, maybe it would be Sun or Straker by now. But uh, we, certainly would have, we, we certainly would have logged up at least as many episodes as Star Trek uh, eventually did. Because we had... Uh, the writers knew what they were doing, the directors... Uh, we actors moved along a lot better. We were more confident in our parts. Yeah, I, I think it really would have been a success. We just got that close, and uh, although it's a success to a certain extent today, it wasn't the big Socko uh, mm. network sales in America. And that's what you've got to get, let's face it, to be a, to be a financial uh, uh, possibility. Were, were you disappointed that it never took off more than... Uh, yeah, I would like to have seen it go to its uh, to a, a, a fuller, more exhilarated time because a lot of that it was exploration. You go into a project like this, you sign contracts with seventeen one-hour episodes, you know, and it's a voyage of discovery for everybody: the prop man, the lighting cameraman, the uh, the art director, the scenic designer, the music man, and and gradually, you know, you you sort of uh, mold it and, and it comes together and it just when it gets really nice and it gets really going then they put a chopper on it you know, and it's kind of quite as interrupt this or <laughs> you get a sense of frustration about that yeah i would like to see it going well on. well you, you've you've actually lived with straker quite a long time anyway haven't you because yes. uh, obviously it's um, been shown over the itv network again um do you feel that you've grown up with a character or i suppose actually it's your past stuck in the past and can't really move on but are you seen as uh, striker still by producers? Not really, no. I'm, uh, I, I find a, a, a big soft spot in my heart for the old guy. You know, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's kind of a hard ass, but uh, he, he, he was one of these people, and you meet them. And he was kind of, when I was working on the character, an amalgam of a lot of people I had met. But they're so dedicated uh, to duty. Mm. You know, they're, today the word would be a workaholic or duty a holic or something. But you see them in Mission Control in America. They had a documentary going out here about these guys who manned the missiles in America. And the dedication of those guys, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, they're really, in a way, they, they lose out on life because to them it's black and white. And they, and they lose out in the grays of life, which is where the really mm -hmm. interesting stuff. But Stryker was one of those kind of guys. And as an actor, to act that, that singleness of purpose. And in one episode, it was really magic when I, I diverted... My son was ill or dying, and uh, I had this spaceship bringing in medical supplies. Then there was a UFO incident, and I had to send the ship off with the urgent medical supplies off to handle the the, the, the Sturm. And uh, and somebody asked me, "Did you uh, did I do right?" And I said, "Yes." <laughs> you know, it's really really kind of heavy. Right. Well, we've promised before uh, the program itself that we would show the wig. It's it's not looking its best. Yes, I, it's I'm uh, a, um, we're a bit short on combs around here, but I, I think we'll... Uh, no, I, I brought a comb. Oh, you, oh, you have I, a comb. I, Good. Here. Right, we, we can Just have a look at this. slowly bring it out. <laughs> oh, you're going to wear it, are you? Oh, no. Oh, no, right. no I, wouldn't, I wouldn't presume that, but there we are. There you are. Let me give it an old brush. This was the one that... that uh, well, actually, there were two or three, but this was the last one we wore. <laughs> because, as I said, you, you, you keep having to get your hair dyed... Uh, uh, Time so after time after time. So uh, they finally got me a wig, <laughs> and this was uh, was not looking her best. I don't I don't think either one of us have held up very well over the years. Oh, I, I I don't think that's true. Anyway, we better quickly just answer some questions that okay. uh, Back in the people box. have uh, yeah. written. Do you still keep in touch with any other members of the cast? No, no, we don't keep in touch socially. Uh, and if we meet professionally to work uh, or at a convention, but. Uh, it's not for any design because we all got along extremely right. well, but it's just, it's just the way things work out. We don't keep in touch. So Paul Foster you don't see, or you don't know what he's up to at the moment? Last I heard about Paul, he was in America doing very well. He was uh, doing some writing, and uh, I see him in, uh, from time to time on a, uh, some kind of a program imported from America. Oh, Michael nice. Billington, you know. He's there, right. yeah. um, is, Ed Bish is Ed Straker like Ed Bishop in real life? Do you heroically save the world every day of your life? Of course I do, Janet. <laughs> Every single day. You should be in bed. <laughs> That's Janet Newbury. Really. Morning, Janet. Uh, question for Ed. Why was only one series of UFO made? Well, I think we've actually answered that one, haven't we? Um, your first 
your first part with ITC. I, I suppose that was Captain Blue, wasn't it? That would be, yes, in the uh, Captain Scarlet and the Mistron series. Now, the here's series. here's an interesting question. Who was the Harlington in the Harlington Straker Film Studios? That is one of those facts like uh, the lost city of Atlantis, of which there was no answer. Because oh, nobody wow. knows. I think ha Harlington was plucked out of the uh, phone book by, <laughs> by Tony Barwick, and uh, I think that's all there was the story there was to it. There was no... Well, I Act think... Actually, Michael Billington's character was called Paul Foster, because our production manager was Norman Foster, and he more or less wanted his... And what his name is? Wanted his sur surname. Well, 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 you learn the inside the facts here, don't you? You get the scoop here. But uh, Harlington, I don't know. I mean, there was no... Uh, well, that's upset, Deep Dave. Secret about that. That's upset, Dave Dennison. Sorry uh, about that, Dave. And also, just just one last oh, two things actually. Alan Bishop of Portsmouth wants to know why the left-hand drive cars always drive on the right-hand side of the road when it was made for showing in Britain. Well, thanks for calling in with that question, Alan. No relation. Well, we never know. But I can't <laughs> work out the, the left hand, the right hand. We're, uh, I don't remember what side we drove on. We drove, but, but, but whatever uh, it was, it was aimed at the American market, and we, we aimed for where they draw it. You know, so, so, they, so they, their viewers, would not be disoriented. That was the, the bottom line on that. Right, and last but not least, can you say hello to someone here? Sure. Hello. Uh, to Anthony Owen of Portsmouth. Anthony Owen of Portsmouth. Who has no idea that you're going to Hello, say. how are you? <laughs> nice to see you. Well, thanks very much for coming in. I hope My that's pleasure. actually cleared up quite a lot of the questions that uh, we've been asked uh, uh, over the past few weeks, if not months. Um, just one thing, I've got to say that UFO changes nights next week, so no doubt the phones will start ringing about that. But I'm glad you were able to come in on a Thursday night. My pleasure. It's been most illuminating. Thanks very much. After the break, Transworld Sport. Late night, late.